Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, lesson 11-4, Multiply Two Fractions. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Leo Tolstoy. He said, a man is like a fraction whose numerator is what he is and whose denominator is what he thinks of himself. The larger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. Leo Tolstoy was uh, one of the world's greatest novelists. He wrote realistic fiction and... Um, he had some great ideas that really motivated Gandhi and Martin Luther King about nonviolent resistance and stuff. So we're talking about a writer who's writing using math to explain what he thinks about something. And for us to know what he's talking about, we have to understand fractions and what numerators are and what denominators are. So that's kind of cool that when you learn about math, a lot of times you start seeing that math connect with other things that you're studying. Our learning goal tonight is to use the standard algorithm and models to understand what happens when you multiply two fractions. So those are some of the books that he wrote right there. War and Peace is one you will definitely hear about as you get older. And there's a stamp with his name on it. Um, our individual lesson learning goals. I'm going to skip the first one because we'll talk about that in a minute. It's just like the previous lessons multiplying fractions. We're going to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. We're going to convert improper fractions if we need to, to mixed numbers or whole numbers. And as we always do anytime we're working with fractions, we're going to simplify if needed. That top one says when we multiply fractions, we are finding a fraction of a fraction. I'm going to show you that with a model or a picture so that you can understand that. But what that means is that when we multiply a fraction which is less than one and another fraction which is less than one, our answer will always be less than the smallest fraction. And I'll prove it to you in just a minute. Here, there's Leo Tolstoy playing chess and in his uh, uniform. Here's our vocabulary, just reminding you that a fraction is always representing an amount less than one whole. So it's a very small amount. Um, a numerator is the number on the top of the fraction, and the denominator is the bottom number in the fraction. There he is with his family and his wife, and here is our first example. Brayden had three-fourths of a pan of brownies left over. She and her friends ate two-thirds of the leftover brownies. How much of the pan of brownies did they eat? So, we know that when we are reading a word problem like this, we have to rephrase it kind of. So they ate two thirds of three fourths. So you can see I wrote that there, two thirds of three fourths. And anytime we see the word of, we can put a multiplication symbol in place of it. So we can represent this as two thirds times three fourths. Let's see how we did that. So I went ahead and wrote two thirds of three fourths. And as you can see at the bottom, I also wrote two thirds times three fourths. Um, and then I drew a pan that we're gonna put our brownies in. So if we know that after the first night they had three fourths of the brownies left over, that means I'm gonna divide this pan into fourths. So I divide it in half, divide each of those parts into halves. I now have four parts and we know that they ate three, or they had three fourths left over that they could eat the next day. So this is the part that we're looking at when we make two thirds of three fourths. If we know that they ate two of three parts, then when I write, draw my picture this way, I'm gonna separate this section of three fourths into thirds. So I can't draw a line down the middle, I've gotta draw one that kind of gives us equal parts. You can see I have one, two, three parts, and two of those parts will be colored in. I'm actually gonna color it in with a blue so that you can see. So I'm going to color in two of those three parts, and I'm gonna color it in all the way across here. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's like I'm looking at this as a whole. So this is one part, two part, and three parts. And I'm coloring one part in and two parts in. I'm not looking at the individual squares, even though my drawings by intersecting those lines make smaller squares. Now, this is how much she actually ate of the whole pan. To help us to tell out of the whole pan, I'm gonna continue these lines. 
So now you can see that in all, we've actually divided our pan of brownies into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 parts, and what she ate, two thirds right here of that, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 parts. 6 twelfths. Now, we can simplify 6 twelfths, and if you go to the simplifying fractions lessons, you know that we put 6 twelfths in a cake, writing it horizontally, and say what goes into both 6 and 12, and we know that 6 will divide evenly into 6 and 12. So 6 goes into 6 one time, and 6 goes into 12 two times. We make another layer of our cake. What goes into both 1 and 2? Just 1. We know that it's 1 because these numbers have only a difference of 1. So 1 goes into 1 one time and 1 goes into 2 two times. Which means that when we're making a cake and we're simplifying, we're looking for the bride and groom standing on top of that wedding cake. So we pick 1 half is our simplified fraction. Now, let's come down and just use the standard algorithm to solve this problem. I'll multiply the numerators. 2 times 3 is 6. And I'll multiply the denominators. 3 times 4 is 12. Again, I know I can simplify that because they're both even numbers. I would still make a cake to simplify. You may have a different strategy you use, and that's okay. So I've already made a cake for that. I know that the numbers on top are 1 half. So I'm going to write that as my simplified fraction and box my answer. So here are our practice problems. You knew that I would have a picture of him in a library with books because I love books. And that's a picture of him telling stories to his grandchildren. Problem number one, one fourth times one half. Of course you can use the standard algorithm, but I also want you to draw a model to support your answer. Go back to the example if you need a reminder of how to do that. Pause it and push play when you've written all of that in your journal. Did you write 1 8th? Let's go ahead and see how we did that. So I rewrote our problem 1 4th times 1 half and remember we can substitute that to help us understand it better 1 4th of 1 half. So I'll draw, we'll pretend like this is also a pan of brownies or something. If we know that we have half, we're going to color in half of this pan of brownies. So we have our half, half of our pan of brownies. Now we know that we have one fourth of that amount. So I have to divide this into four parts going this way. And I'm gonna use two, three, four. So, um, now I can color in one of those. We'll do it with a blue so we can see it really well. Oops, that didn't stay blue. We'll color in one of those. That's one fourth of one half. Now to make that a little easier to understand, we'll extend our lines on this way. So we can see that in all, if we cut all of our pieces the same size, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pieces in all. And where we have crisscrossing lines of both colors, we have one of eight parts. So I'll put a one over it. Now let's see if our algorithm worked out the same way. If I multiply my numerators, one times one, I get one. And I multiply my denominators, four times two, I get eight. One eighth, it's the same answer. And I can't simplify it because whenever my numerator's one, it is in simplest form. Problem number two, one third of two fifths. So go ahead, use the standard algorithm to solve it, draw a model, and to support your answer, pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write two fifteenths? Sounds crazy, but we can draw a model to show that it's true. Let's do that. So I've written my problems down, one third of two fifths, which I know can be rewritten to say one third times two fifths. I hope I said that right, one third of two fifths. So since this is my long side, it will be easier to divide into five parts. So I'm going to divide this side into two fifths, five parts. So I can't draw a line in the middle that'll give me even parts, but I'm gonna draw kind of a, a space in the middle and then divide those other spaces in half. 
So now I have one, two, three, four, five parts in my rectangle. And I'm going to color in two of them because we have two of five parts or two fifths. Now I'm looking just at this amount right here. And I'm going to go ahead and divide this side into thirds. So again, I can't draw my line in the middle. I've got to kind of leave a, a, a row going down the middle. So I now have three parts this way, and I have one of three parts. So going this way, I'm going to fill in one of these rows. So remember, I'm not looking at this as individual pieces, two individual pieces. I'm looking at this as one row. So now when I count all of my parts up, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's also the same as 3 this way times 5 this way, which is 15. That's my denominator, how many parts I have in all. When I count how many parts 1 third of 2 fifths is, there's 1, 2 parts, 2 fifteenths. Now let's use the standard algorithm to check that. I multiply my numerators, 1 times 2 is 2, and 3 times 5 is 15 for my denominators. I can't simplify that. There's no number that will divide into both 2 and 15. So I know that I've completed my problem. 1 third of 2 fifths is 2 fifteenths. Number 3, 2 fifths times 3 fourths times 10. Oh, that sounds like a multi-step problem, but we can do it. We'll just do one step at a time. So first solve 2 fifths of 3 fourths, and then find your answer and multiply that times 10. Remember that we rewrite our whole numbers as fractions and put that 10 in the numerator over 1. Go ahead, pause, and push play when you're ready. Did you write 3? Wow, let's see how we did that. So I went ahead and wrote 2 fifths times 3 fourths, but I wanted to show you how I'm going to represent the whole number 10 as a fraction. Remember, this says 10 divided by 1, which equals the whole number 10, so I'm still representing the whole number 10. We're going to do the first step first, 2 fifths times 3 fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite, multiply those numerators, 2 times 3 is 6, and 5 times 4 is 20. Now I can multiply the second step of my problem. 6 times 10 is 60, and 20 times 1 is 20. Now I have an improper fraction there because my numerator is larger than my denominator, and that's never okay for the larger number to be on top in your final answer. So we're going to go ahead and send 60 home. And 20 is going to go knock on the door and go into the number 60. So 20 goes into 6, it won't, but 20 will go into 60 three whole times because 3 times 20 is 60. So I have the whole number 3. Practicing word problems. Alicia had 5 sixths of a pan of cornbread left over after she ate lunch. For dinner she ate one half of the leftover cornbread. How much of the pan of cornbread did she eat? Go ahead and pause it, figure it out, write it in your journal, and push play when you're ready. Did you write in words, because you, it was a word problem, Alicia ate 5 twelfths of the pan of cornbread for dinner. Let's go ahead and use the standard algorithm on this one to solve it. So if we were reading this, she had 5 sixths remaining originally, and then she ate half of that. So she has one half of five six, or one half times five six. So if we multiply straight across, our numerators are one times five is five, and our denominators two times six is 12. That is in simplest form. There is no number that will divide evenly into both our numerator and denominator. But just for fun, let's draw a picture especially for you artists. So we're dividing this into six parts because originally she ate five of six parts. And we'll color in those five parts. I'm not an artist. I bet yours will look much better than mine. There's five six that she ate for lunch. Now, 
We're going to divide that 5 6 in half. So we're going to divide it into two parts. I now have one part and two parts. And she ate one of those parts. Not one of these little pieces, but one whole part. I'll go ahead and connect that line just so that you can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 parts in all. And she ate one, two, three, four, five of them for dinner, five twelfths. It's time to challenge yourself. You can do this. This problem is similar to the one we just worked. Five sixths times seven ninths times four. Go ahead and do it using the standard algorithm, but then draw a model to support your answer. And let's see what that looks like. I'm excited to see what you come back to class to show me. Um, come back to class tomorrow ready to check your answer. Finishing up, um, review your learning goals. Do you understand every part of this? Put it on a one, a two, or a three level in your learning in your journal so that we can kind of help you. If you're still at a level one, we can give you lots of help. If you're at a level two, make sure you write down the questions that you have in your journal so we can get them answered. Marvelous multiplication of fractions. You've completed lesson 11-4, multiply two fractions. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.